Das nennt sich mal großes Kino. 150 Millionen hat Australia gekostet. Neun Monate lang wurde an den schönsten Plätzen Australiens gedreht. Am 25. Dezember kommt dieser Streifen in die Kinos und der Hauptdarsteller, Hugh Jackman, der ist schon mal vorgereist, nämlich zu uns. Welcome in the show. Thank you very much. Guten Abend. Do you speak German a little bit? Ich spreche keine Deutsch. Ja, es hört sich schon mal ganz gut an. Um, we continue in English? Yes, why don't we do that? That's probably a good idea. Do you have your shoes back? Both I have my of them. Back, yeah. Too bad. You wanted to wear my shoes, actually. Yeah. yeah. No, but they—they they were very close to fitting. Yeah. Very close. Yeah. For the Oscar. For the Oscars, yeah, I can see those silver shoes going down very well. Okay. <laughs> so just to all the people about um, Australia, it's a huge production. So, um, what did you learn about your home country while shooting this movie? Well, it reminded me of how big it is because we shot in some places that were like shooting on Mars. Um, but, you know, there were things about our history that I learnt, I sort of knew, but more importantly, just living out there in the outback, learning how to uh, be a real outback cowboy. That, that was a drover, as we call it. That, uh, that was a big difference for me. They're pretty tough. They're pretty tough guys out there. So Drover is a pretty tough guy. Is there anything else? What can you tell us about your role, about Drover? Well, the Drover is uh, he's like a cowboy. So nine months of his life, he would sleep under the stars. Everything he owns, he could fit into one bag. He's, uh, you know, outlives outside of society. Does what he wants, when he wants. Doesn't, doesn't want anyone to bother him. Fairly classical male. He doesn't really want responsibility, if you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Afraid of commitment. One of those. Uh, and does he influence Sarah as well? Yeah, in a, in a lot of ways. Yeah, I mean, she pushes pushes his buttons a lot, you know, and they, they fight. It's very much like African Queen. Okay. But, also Sarah wird gespielt mit Nicole Kidman, just yeah, to explain Nicole. the people. Yeah. So do you have men like that in Germany? Hmm? Do you have men like the driver in Germany? No. No? no. You don't? No. The tough guys, he come on. No. No. <laughs> Doch, natürlich. The cameraman is set up, the cameraman and the sound man. And, um, and that's it. Uh, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Two people in Germany. <laughs> so, um, um, it was your first Australian movie after eight years in Hollywood. Yeah. Were you happy to use your real Australian accent again? I was thrilled. Uh, poor Nicole. Nicole's going back to do a movie in Australia for the first time in a long time as well. And it's called Australia, and she had a dialect coach because she had to have a British accent. So uh, it was great. It made it a lot easier. A lot easier. It's the most expensive and biggest um, movie about Australian history ever. So what does this movie mean to your home country? What do you think? Well, there was when, when I saw the movie for the first time, it was at the premiere in Australia, and you could feel a kind of nervousness in the audience. I've never really felt that before because the moment the movie was called Australia, it became personal for people. And for me... I said to Baz, I said, we better get this right, mate, or every time we go in and out of customs, you know, at the airport, we're going to be strip searched if we get it wrong, you know. So, <laughs> of course, everything went to another level, you know. But on a serious note, it, it, I'm something I'm, it's something I'm very proud of and I'm thrilled to be part of it, you know. A good thing as well is um, we can see a part of your naked body again. Do you always <laughs> ask for this opportunity before signing a contract? It's a necessity. I will not do it. I, I don't like any more than half of the scenes with clothes on. I think, what's the point, really? You know. No, I. <laughs> That's perfect. You know, the sexiest man alive. Um, so, what do you? What does your um, wife uh, thought if she heard uh, the People magazine elected you to be the sexiest man alive? The first thing I think she took it as vindication, like who else would I have married, kind of thing. And then after that, she. She asked me how it was chosen, and I said, I don't know, I think they just sit around a conference table and they decide, and she said, so anyone can get it. And I said, well, as long as you're a guy, and she said, and Brad Pitt didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> that was from my wife, so there you go. Uh, you? Yeah. In which situation is the um, sexiest man alive rather unsexy? <laughs> there... yeah, yeah, definitely. Anytime before noon. <laughs> um, there's a very small window where, where I might fit the bill. It happens once or twice a year, just in my very rare good moments. Okay. Yeah. We're looking forward to the Oscars as well. You're going to host the Oscars. That's a big honor. How do you feel about that? Nervous already or no? No, a little bit of nerves, but, it, you know, I'm... I'm really excited about it. I mean, I'm an actor. I train as an actor. I, I don't think I ever thought it possible one day I would host the Oscars. I, I grew up watching the Oscars. And when you're in Australia, the Oscars, that is the most glamorous night of the year. That is the pinnacle. So to be there front and center is something I'll never forget. I mean, I'm, I'm going to really, really enjoy it. No matter what happens, I'm, I'm going to enjoy it. But you already have an Oscar at home, your son, so exactly. it's good. You know, um, I, 
my son actually said something very clever, I thought. He's only eight, and his name is Oscar. And he said, oh, I think the headline should read, Oscar's dad to present the Oscars. <laughs> I thought that was good. Oh, sweet. Yeah. You sing Christmas carols with him at home now at Christmas time? Yeah, yeah. We, we always do carols. In fact, Nicole Kidman has a party every year, which we normally go to, although this year she'll be in Nashville. And she has people come over and Keith plays guitar or piano and everyone sings carols. I'm sure you can come. It, it sounds pretty nice, Nicole is doing a party, Keith's playing the piano, and um, yeah, it sounds pretty cool. Yeah. So, um... Yeah, of course. Um, I'm there. I'm the I'm the Santa Claus then. Are you, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are you, that, wow, that's a good makeup job. But do you do you um uh, do you sing carols? Like, are you a carol yeah, singer? Of course, we're doing this now, here. Who, you, me? Y we. Ah. Us. <laughs> Just the two of us. <laughs> Just the two of us. Yeah. Okay. You start. I'm doing the, the. Through the snow and a one horse open sleigh, all the fields we go, laughing all the way. Ha ha. Saint bells on bobtails ring, we're making spirits bright. What fun it is to laugh and sing a sleighing song tonight! Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way! Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh! Hey, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way! Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh! Perfect. Have a nice Christmas. Yeah, you too. Everyone, have a nice Christmas. What is how do you say that in German? Uh, um, uh, schöne Weihnachten. Uh, again? Schöne. Schöne. Weihnachten. Schöne, schöne Weihnachten. Perfect. Ich spreche keine Deutsch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>